So yeah, so uh, today being Father's Day, so the first thing, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? You know, it's your father, right? Your your earthly father. And for me personally, my father passed away almost four years ago now. And you know, uh, I never got got along with my father growing up, right? Right up till college, because he was in the army, he was too busy in his own life and he's got enough of things to do. So I think for us, mum, we grew up, my mum was a big, bigger part of our lives. And so, I, since I never got along with my father, I would always think he's like the guy to go to if you need money or if you need something else, that kind of stuff. And it's only after he became a Christian in 2011-12, where I really started seeing him change, you know, change so much that I, there were things I started, like, you know, I could get along better with him. I could see him uh, do things differently, you know, and so much so that right up till when he passed away four years ago, I I had such a good relationship with him. And if I had to have even a bucket list, I pretty much, I think I did 99% of the things I I could do before he passed away, you know, and of course, he passed away. I never saw it coming. I always thought, you know, God's there, God's by our side. That could never happen to us personally, you know. And it did happen. But, you know, <clears throat> when I think about my father, being a kid, you've got so many distractions, you've got so much going on that you never really, you never, your, your father's there. And because I was never close to him, so those years went by. But it's like in the last five to seven years of knowing him is when I realized, you know, just how amazing a person he had become. Because my dad comes, like some of you Ranjis all know my dad so well. And my dad comes from a family, he's, he's from Bihar. So he comes from a family where he's, where his father, his mother passed away when he was like four or five. And his father remarried and all of that happened. But his father would didn't really care if there was food on the table. For him, it was always uh, land, property, gambling. So that was priority. So I can imagine for my father and his family, growing up in that kind of environment, as it is, you don't have a mom. <clears throat> and then you've got a father who's more interested in everything else. That, you know, and then my dad coming in, I mean, it must have been really difficult for him, you know. And then to come in and then today, I, with the... With, what we've seen my dad become, the kind of person he is, coming from a place like Bihar, which for us is like a cultural shock, you know, because Bihar is a place where it's like, uh, if you're rich, you have value. If you're poor, you have no value. There's no life, there's nothing. And even when we used to go there, even when I go there three, four years, uh, uh, sorry, two years ago or a year back, I still, like, I hate that place. The place is so beautiful. But that gap between the rich and poor is so much that literally the poor are never valued, you know. And today I'm blessed. We all are blessed because my mom, although she was from Goa, which is an amazing culture, goes to Bihar, starts this home and, you know, orphanage and all that stuff. And so whenever we go there and witness that, that's the joy we get, you know. Today I've realized that it's because of my mom and especially my father from a place which Otherwise, he wanted to leave permanently. He didn't care about that place. He also hated that place just as much. And to start a home, an orphanage for kids, where I could see kids coming in from, you've seen some of those kids when they were 10 months old today, to the joy, their lives restored, their... It's uh, a little pot. Uh, their, uh, to see that, to see my parents, to see my father want to do something like that is not only gives us so much joy but today it's it's uh, it literally has changed our lives completely our perspective of things and so you know today when i think about being father's day it it uh, the only thing i think about is my dad's generosity in a place where everyone thought he was a fool literally like you've got money, you've got wealth, why you want to spend it on someone else or these rich kids or these poor kids or what do you want to invest in their lives for, you know? That generosity, that simplicity, that 
that like he had no pride that humility that it didn't matter who comes and says what to him it just didn't matter to him you know and he was still love every single person and you know there's that verse which says whether it's a rich man or a beggar that comes into your home you're always treated equally you know and that's the thing and i think about that i'm so proud about him you know because of i can learn so much from the things i can i would never be able to experience otherwise you know but i could do that looking at him like he could be that role model in my life today and so today when i think about you know his nature his character it just reminds me about how jesus is and jesus is nature jesus is character jesus is you is was so humble he was so kind he was so generous he was so loving loving unconditionally you know and it's like today when i think about it i think i can imagine the father you know and uh, it's like today i'm a father to gail okay and like i never liked kids otherwise but coming from you know it's like today when i see yeah like when i'm out somewhere for a few hours and i come back home the joy she gives like the excitement like she'd want to climb on top of me or whatever or i had gone to bihar for a couple of days this was i think about a year ago and i remember coming in okay i was just coming in the rickshaw they were going for a walk on the road and i i thought i'd get a better welcome initially but they were all on the road and i get out of the rickshaw and i'm walking towards her and renel's talk was talking to the neighbor or someone and yael just looks at me and she couldn't even walk properly at those times and she just wanted to run and run towards me and the way she ran towards me that joy i was like it was worth all the late hours the flight the check in all that i had to go through just that joy it gave me and then you know and i just realized imagine if that's the joy that me being a father my daughter gives me imagine the joy that jesus gets or his father gets when we reach out to him when we you know when we like when we come running to him and say father god we need you we we want you and so as this there's a verse which says uh sorry okay wait i'll come back to that uh so you know so when jesus was here there was a, there were these stories he would love to say and this one story was of the parable of the lost sheep when jesus told the parable of the lost sheep suppose one of you has 100 sheep and loses one of them doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go ra- go after the one lost sheep until he finds it and when he finds it he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says rejoice with me i have found my lost sheep i tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven when one sinner who repents than 99 righteous people and you know this just goes to show that for jesus that one sheep mattered so much more than the 99 that he would leave the 99 just to go after that one sheep that's what the shepherd would do and there's a similar story where of the the parable of the lost son where there was a man who had two sons the younger one said to his father father give me my share of the estate so he divided his property between them not long after that the younger son got together all he had set off for a distant country and then squandered his wealth in wild living after he had spent everything there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, "How many of my father's hired servants have fa- have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, 'Father, forgive me.'" So while the son was returning home and He was a long he was still a long way away when his father saw him and filled with compassion for him he ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him the son said to his father father i have sinned against heaven and against you i am no longer worthy to be called your son 
But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So you know when Jesus spoke of these stories in the he was talking about he was talking about the father's heart. And just his character. And then nothing we can ever do can change the way he loves us and how he would receive us no matter what we do. Because no matter what we do, we can never really put up a wall or put up a block between how much God loves us, whether we deserve it or not. And he's that same God who created everything we see, created each one of us so individually. He knows us so well inside out. I mean, what hasn't he done? Be it, you know, the, 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 everything that we see from the smallest thing. You know, there's a verse which says, I care so much of the little sparrows and so much more do I care about you. And when we see creation, we see beauty, we see nature, we see we so, so many amazing things. We just can't imagine how amazing and how powerful and how much that very God who created all of this, who built all of this, not only did it for us and for our pleasure and for us, but he did it because he cared so much about us, down to the very small detail. And he cares about everything that happens to us. And all he wants us to do is say, you know, af it's just come, come to him, knock on the door, just seeing af seek after him. And there's this, and like the Lord's Prayer starts with our Father. You know, that's, it's a, such a simple prayer. We've all learned that in school growing up. And the only thing, the prayer starts with our Father who art in heaven. And it's literally Jesus saying, this is the Father. This is, a, this is the heart of the Father. This is how much he cares about us. And today I'm so glad that I could see it in my Father, you know. And just to... Uh, I just want each one of you all to today to just, you know, just witness what the Father's heart is for each one of you all, you know, and just how much He cares about each one of us. And there's, there's this verse that says, I will be a father to you and you shall be my, my children. You shall be my sons and my daughters because I knew the plans I had for you even before you were in your mother's womb. And so today I just uh, want to say that uh, I just pray and I'm, I'm going to play one song and I just want you all to just ask Father God in heaven to just come in and just touch you all and today that you all have, have that kind of relationship with the Father in heaven because today our earthly fathers today I will be a father to Yael and I will love her I will try to love her unconditionally and I will always be there for her and always encourage her and always be her biggest fan and today I'm there today we are there today tomorrow we're gone but you know just that legacy that I'm so proud of my father left behind I would like to leave because that's all that matters you know and today I just want you all to also witness that love.